this week in check out my new t-shirt look it says ah bristol that's it's good isn't it yes yeah, i've got to work out a way to sort of maybe i should just take this off altogether okay everyone thinks i'm a pervert now blow your top this week's suggestion was suggested by my friend Jess via her friend Katie. Katie, for the rest of the video, I'm actually going to be addressing you directly. Everybody else, you're just along for the ride. As usual, or as the last time I did this, I probably only did it once, didn't I? So, as usual from now on, maybe. If if you want to see more, if you want to suggest something, then go to my Facebook page and, and write a post, or write on this post, or you know say some words or something to me and then maybe i'll do the a video and give you some anyway hi katie anyway katie you asked what's the origin of the phrase to flip one's lid what maybe what does it mean you probably know what it means otherwise you wouldn't say it but what does it mean as well well katie i'm very glad that you've suggested this because a it means i don't need to come up with something and b it means that you're curious about the world and that's just about the best thing there is about a person. Generally speaking, to flip your lid is a variation of to blow your top or to blow your stack, which are both American English variations or United States English variations of, i.e. to get angry or animatedly angry about something. You might say, if I hear one more person saying freedom of speech means that you can say whatever you want and that also that United the United States invented freedom of speech, I'm going to flip my lid. That's That was quite a specific example. I apologise. I'm not apologising for that. When this question or when your request was first put to me via Jess, I sort of guessed that it was probably to do with kettles or bins or something, you know, something that involved a bit of pressure. Well, turns out I'm correct, but also I'm not correct. Etymology online, uh, sorry, I'm not, I'm not showing my t-shirt enough here. I need to be showing my t-shirt a bit more. There we go. Etymology online attributes this to, well, American slang, actually, going back to the 1950s. And actually, the meaning that it's used in that context means to get excited. So people who flipped their lid or flipped their wig, which was the other variation, were people who tended to be very excited about something. Amusingly, it was used in well album or record reviews in a very hip way so it used to be very hip of the moment language there is a slightly earlier british variation of this for using flipping in case well it basically you use flipping in as a euphemism for intercourse essentially which is a horrible word should we just say what it is should we just do it for what it is yeah so flipping is a euphemism or a, a, a synonym for the word fuck i'm sure you've heard at least one of your friends or probably your mum or your dad i've certainly heard my mum or my dad say flipping instead of that other word because they didn't want to swear in front of the kids or more appropriately they didn't want to swear in front of other parents in front of the kids i suspect though katie that you probably use it in the same sense that i thought about it i mean you might not i mean i'm gonna go on this point anyway so just bear with me just humor me for a little bit i suspect that you probably use it in the way that you mean that someone is losing their temper if you are using it in that way, then correct. That's okay, because that's how English works. As long as your cohort and your family and the group around you, whoever you're saying that to, understands that that's the context that you're using it, then brilliant. But do understand that the rest of the English-speaking world, i.e. everybody outside of your vicinity, probably thinks that it means to get excited. If you have a different view on this, or if any of your friends have a different view on this, or if anybody who's watching this video has a different view on this, put it in the comments. Just be nice, yeah? I mean, like, no one needs to insult anybody about it, do they, really? So what about the variations, i.e. to blow one's stack, or to blow one's top, or to, what was the other one, to some something else probably if you go to classroom.com you can find an example of written down and they've done an explanation it's quite a good explanation the link will be below you know how this works they cite julia cresswell who wrote a book called the cat's pajamas which presumably was a book about etymology which is what this is about which is the history of words by the way katie do you say do you say pajamas or do you say pjs or do you say gym jams because I have to say, I'm a Jim Jams man, 
because simply because it means that I can say things like Captain Jim Jams reporting for the Wooden Hill. Thank you. Don't you think? I mean, that's I mean, I mean, it's both comedy gold and just a bit heartwarming. Don't you think? Just a bit cosy. Anyway, Cresswell relates these sayings to the embryonic United States, you know, that sort of pioneer era time when they were looking for oil and gold and steam engines were brand new inventions come over from the United Kingdom. So so basically what would happen is you had to monitor the pressure on an oil well pretty pretty carefully, otherwise it would blow its top. Which, if anybody was anywhere near it, then you, well, you don't want that to happen, basically, because it might blow, blow you to bits or something. Also, steam engines, you have to monitor them pretty closely as well. Anybody who's ever used a steam engine, which is practically nobody who's alive, unless you're one of those technicians down at the Bristol docks or something, then you will know that actually you do have to monitor a steam engine pretty closely. Otherwise, you, I mean, you don't want too much pressure because you don't want it blowing up, essentially. Anyway, all of that seems kind of obvious, but also it... Here's the thing. I think it's kind of interesting because it means that every time something comes along into our culture, like, I don't know, an industrial revolution or something, or the communications revolution that's happened in the last 30, 40 years, then that means that we develop a whole set of phrases which we end up using for each other. I wonder, Katie, if there are any phrases that you use at work or at home which are specific to you, which relate to a certain thing. So, I don't know... Maybe Jan from Stationery, maybe she got stuck in the photocopier once and any time anyone gets stuck in the photo... I don't know how you get stuck in a photocopier. Any time anybody gets stuck in a photocopier, you call that a Jan. You're just like, oh no, they've done a Jan. That was a terrible example. I've. <laughs> but I mean, it, you get the point, right? If you do have any of those specific phrases, then let me know. If you know any... I need to put my t-shirt in the shot again. If you know anybody else who has specific phrases, then maybe they could let me know as well via the comments or something anyway that that's how that that's flip your lid ja uh, katie Th thank thank you for the suggestion i mean in, in all honesty thank you for the suggestion i know you didn't specifically mean for this to happen but it's happened now so cool anyway as usual here is a story and here is another word that i've done and if you want to subscribe, just press the button on my face and then then you'll do a subscribe then. Brilliant. Thanks and bye.